welcome you in the lecture series of random processes detection and estimation there is 25th lecture of this series till now uh, we have discussed about signal detection whose objective was which one of two hypotheses is true based on the observed data we have also discussed about parametric non parametric detection and also we have discussed about detection of random signals in this lecture we will discuss about the signal parameter estimation and the outline of this lecture are what is estimation and different types of estimation the complexity level of estimation point estimator and its properties and in the objective of this lecture you will able to explain why the need for signal parameter estimation the level of complexity complexity of estimator and the point estimator now we will start from the from the definition what is estimator in signal parameter estimation we extract relevant information from the noisy signal estimation theory has many application like in radar system image processing biomedical processing communication system control system seismology sonar systems speech processing the control system uh, etc and we have discussed about these in the lecture 9 in the estimation we assume that the receiver has made a decision in favor of two hypotheses but some uh, parameters associated with the signal may not be known so for the so 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 the goal of estimation is to estimate those parameters in an optimal fashion uh, based on the finite number of samples of the signal now we will discuss about the different types of estimation approach based on the assumption made about the unknown parameter the estimation methods can be divided into uh, two groups classical parameter estimation and bayesian estimation in classical parameter estimation you have given a set of observations and given a, a given an assumed probabilistic model for the unknown parameter and you have given a deterministic unknown parameter and you have to find the best estimate of the unknown parameter like dc signal in white gaussian noise or image registration parameters etc in bayesian estimation the unknown parameter is random in nature and you have to estimate the unknown parameter now let us consider the complexity level of estimation problem there are three levels of complexity in estimation problem level first when the signal in the noise to be estimated is known means deterministic signal uh, for example pulse position modulation communication system with the phase synchronization and level 2 when the signal in the noise to be estimated uh, having unknown parameters for example range velocity or angle measurement of the radar or sonar and the third level is when the signal parameter to be estimated in ran, uh, random in nature uh, for example power spectrum parameter estimation and velocity measurement in radio astronomy and ground mapping radar let x1 x2 to xn are n independent identically distributed samples of random variable x with some pdf px x theta Uh, depending on an unknown parameter theta and let x1 x2 to xn are the corresponding values of the sample random sample and uh, there is a, a function of samples used to estimate the parameter it is g x1 x2 xn and uh, now this function of uh, random variables x1 to xn is the estimator of theta and the value of this function phi is the estimate of theta this means uh, theta cap estimate value of theta it is g x1 x2 to xn is the estimate of theta here the these are the uh, value of random samples and these are the random samples in the estimator and in estimated value these are the values of the random samples 
and now we have following two now we have two questions how close theta cap to theta and are they better estimator so how close theta cap to theta means how good or optimal is the estimator and are they better estimator means are they close to the value to be measured the measure of the goodness of estimator we need to define a suitable cost function c theta theta cap which shows the difference between the estimate and the true value of the parameter in classical parameter estimation the optimization criteria is the minimization of mean square error msc is the expected value of theta cap minus theta whole square and it will be variance theta cap plus expected value of theta cap minus theta whole square so it, uh, you can see here this function of only data and this is function of theta and if expected value of theta cap minus theta is zero and variance of theta cap is minimum then we can say this is minimum variance unbiased estimator mvue it is not necessary that an estimate of a parameter is one single value the estimate can be the range of the values and this estimate is known as interval estimate and the estimator is known as interval estimator estimate that has single value is known as point estimate and the estimator is known as point estimator now we will look uh, the property of a point estimator first property is the unbiased estimator let phi is the estimator of theta and its estimate value is theta cap then the expected value of this estimator phi is equal to theta for all theta then this is unbiased estimator of theta and its mean square error msc theta cap it will be the expected value of phi minus theta whole square so it will be variance of phi plus expected value of phi minus theta whole square so this is zero and uh, because it is unbiased and uh, you will have only the variance of phi this means the mean square error equals to its variance and the unknown parameter here is non random and the second property is efficient estimator an estimator phi 1 will be more efficient estimator compared to phi 2 uh, of the parameter theta if so phi 1 and phi 2 both are unbiased estimator of theta and the variance of phi 1 less than variance of phi 2 so if the variance uh, if both estimator are unbiased and the variance of uh, uh, estimator phi 1 is less than variance of unbiased estimator phi 2 then we can say the estimator phi 1 is more efficient uh, compared to uh, estimator phi 2 now uh, third property is consistent estimator let an estimator phi of a parameter theta is said to be consistent estimator if a limit n tends to infinity expected value for phi is theta and and limit n tends to infinity variance of estimator phi is zero uh, and where n is the size of the uh, random samples so when these two condition will follow then we we can say that the estimator is consistent now let us take one example to better understand the estimator let x1 to xn are the random samples of random variable x with mean uh, with unknown mean mu and uh, so that the estimator of mu means u is equal to 1 by n summation n1 to n xn is equal to x bar is unbiased estimator of mu here x bar is the sample mean so first of all we will take the expected value of this estimator so ex expected value of u it will be equal to expected value of 1 by n e to the power n 1 to n x n so it will be equal to 1 by n summation n 1 to n expected value of x n and I can also write it as 1 by n summation n 1 to n and you, and you know the expected value of x n is uh, mu so from here you can see that it is equal to 1 by n into n mu and it will be expected value for estimator u it is mu so we can say that the u is an unbiased estimator of mu 
let us take another example let x1 to xn uh, where xn are random samples of random variable x with unknown mean mu and variance sigma square so that the estimator of sigma square that is v square is equal to 1 by n summation n1 to n xn minus x bar whole square is bias estimator of sigma square where x bar is the sample mean so for this we will take the expected value of v square so expected value of v square it will be equal to the expected value of 1 by n summation n1 to n xn minus x bar whole square so i can write it as expected value 1 by n summation and 1 to n xn minus mu minus x bar minus mu and whole square of this term then you will get uh, it is equal to 1 by n summation and 1 to n expected value for whole square of xn minus mu minus n into expected value of whole square of x bar minus mu and it will be equal to 1 by n summation n1 to n expected value of whole square of xn minus mu minus summation n1 to n expected value of whole square of x bar minus mu so i can write it as this is variance of x and this is variance of x bar and variance of x you know this sigma square and variance of x bar means variance of 1 by n uh, summation n1 to n xn and it will be sigma square minus 1 by n square variance of uh, summation n1 to n uh, xn and it will be uh, sigma square minus 1 by n square and it will be equal to sigma square minus 1 by n square summation n1 to n variance xn and you know variance of xn is sigma square so it will be sigma square minus 1 by n sigma square and it will be equal to n minus 1 by n sigma square and uh, so here you can see the expected value of v square is not equal to sigma square so v square is unbiased estimator of sigma square let us take another example let x is equal to x1 x2 to xn where xn are random samples of poison random variable with unknown parameter theta so that lambda 1 is equal to 1 by n summation n 1 to n xn and lambda 2 1 by 2 x1 plus x2 are both unbiased estimator of theta and also uh, and also so that which estimator is more efficient so for the first part we have to take the expected value of uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 so expected value of lambda 1 it is equal to 1 by n x, uh, summation n 1 to n expected value of xn and it will be equal to 1 by n and, and expected value for xn it is lambda you know the expected value for uh, poison random variable it is, it is lambda and uh, from this you can have uh, the so from this you can say that the expected value of estimator lambda 1 it is lambda and uh, expected value of lambda 2 it will be equal to 1 by 2 expected value of x1 plus expected value of x2 and it is 1 by 2 lambda plus lambda so it will be equal to lambda so both estimator are unbiased estimator of lambda here you can see now uh, which estimator is more efficient the estimator which having the less variance will be the more efficient so first we will measure the variance of lambda 1 so the variance of lambda 1 is equal to variance of 1 by n summation and 1 to n xn and I can write it as 1 by, six, 1 by n square summation and 1 to n variance of xn and you know the variance of uh, uh, poison random variable it is lambda variance and mean both are lambda so it will be lambda by n and now variance of lambda 2 means variance of 1 by 2 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 it will be equal to 1 by 4 
variance of x1 plus variance of x2 and it will be 1 by 4 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 this means lambda by 2 so 4 and greater than 2 you can see here lambda 1 is more efficient estimator of lambda than lambda 2 here n is the sample size and for the sample size n greater than 2 lambda 1 by n less than lambda by 2 now consider another example let x is equal to x1 x2 to xn where xn are random samples of uniform random variable over 0 to a where a is unknown so that n the maximization of x1 x2 to xn is consistent estimator of parameter a now given fzz is equal to n by a into z by a to the power n minus 1 where z is between 0 to a uniform random variable so if x is uniform distribution over 0 to a then the pdf of z means maximization x1 to xn it is fzz n by a z by a to the power n minus 1 where z is between 0 to a now the expected value of m it will be integration 0 to a z n by a z is to the power n dz and it will be equal to n upon n plus 1 into a and uh, when we have limit n tends to infinity expected value of m it will be equal to a and the expected value of m square uh, means uh, it will be 0 to integration 0 to a z square f z z dz so it will be n by a is to the power n integration 0 to a z is to the power n plus 1 dz and it will be equal to n upon n plus 2 a square so you know the variance is expected value of m square minus whole square of the expected value of m so from here you can have n a square uh, divided by n plus 2 minus n square a square divided by n plus 1 whole square so from this you can have n upon n plus 2 into n plus 1 a square and the limit n tends to infinity variance of n that is 0 so both conditions are uh, follow here so we can say that n is consistent estimator of parameter a so far in this lecture we have discussed about estimation type of estimation point estimator and its properties this was 25th lecture of the lecture series of random processes detection and estimation in the next lecture we will discuss about minimum variance unbiased estimation mvue till then thanks for listening this lecture thank you